So welcome back to WCCF Tech TV, everyone. And what we're doing today is we're taking a look at the 5700 XT and the 2060 Super when both are overclocked. See, recently we got in the Sapphire Pulse 5700 XT and did a review on that, found it to be a very good card, but we found that the clock speeds and the actual performance wasn't a whole lot different than the reference card. Now I did take a time to overclock that card and found it to be beneficial. And what I also found is the 5700 XT reference card, which is what we're using here, is, well, just as fast. And it overclocks to, well, pretty much the same point. Now the idea here is the 5700 XT in, in the recent review and the 2060 Super, the 2060 Super fell a little bit behind the, 20, the 5700 XT. So with both of them being the same cost, what happens if you take them both and then you overclock both of them? Because you know, well, now that aftermarket cards are in the, in, in the mix and both are available, they're both 400 bucks. They both have eight gigabytes of GDDR6 memory, I almost said five, but they're fairly, I mean, the, the, if you go in to buy one, they're going to be on, sitting on the shelf next to each other for pretty much the same price. So what happens when you overclock them? Because out of the box, we see the 5700 XT does have an edge. But when you take them and you both crank both of them up as much as they'll go and within comfortable. So I didn't do anything crazy. Did no, no soft play power table. So I just used Wattman to overclock the 5700 XT. MSI Afterburner to overclock the 2060 Super. So what we ended up with on the 5700 XT was right about 1950 to 1980 megahertz on the core by reducing the voltage down from 1210 down to 1120 and increase the memory up to 900 megahertz instead of the stock 875. Now we did have to apply plus 50 on the power limit to ensure that it well, leveled out as much as possible. So that's where we landed on the 5700 XT, the 2060 Super, got an initial 150 megahertz on the core, which resulted in a, when it was boosting during games, between 1920 and 1950 megahertz. And the memory went from 14 gigabits per second up to 15.5 gigabits per second. The 5700 XT was at 14.4, if you do the effective gigabits per second on the transfer rate. So that's the difference there. So core clock was a little lower on the 2060 Super, the memory clock was a little lower on the 5700 XT. But throwing both of them on the Z370 test bench with the Core i9-9900K at 5 gigahertz, I wanted to see how things shook out once the overclock was in place. So since this isn't a review video and this is wanted to see, well, it's an experimental video, I wanted to see how these things overclocked and what kind of results you get from it. These are just gonna roll with a little bit of music, so enjoy the results. Alright guys, so there you have it. Those are the results. Outside of uh, well, power draw and everything going up, temperatures, all that jazz, and the 5700 XT did hit that 110C, actually got up to 112 at one point on the hotspot or the T-junction temperature, so it's something to keep in mind there. Definitely might not want to do this on the reference card, but these cards kind of came in neck and neck as far as actual performance, so when the frame rate hit the screen, it's really hard to tell which one was which in that regards. So if you're trying to choose between 5700 XT and the 2060 Super, you're really going to have to pick which features you want from each vendor. So they both do offer something different. So you're going to have to look at all of those and make up your mind with that one. This is not a review and this is not a recommendation on either one. This is just wanted to see what would happen if you overclocked them both. So this has been Keith the WCCF Tech TV. Let us know what you think about this video. Would you would like to see others in the future done like this. Let us know. We'll catch you in the next one.